Hi folks, I'm Jem, the Crazy Pigeon Lady, and it's my mission to entertain, educate, and inspire you with all things pigeon and dove. Welcome back to this, my series, Pigeons as Pets, for beginners who are keeping their pigeons as pets. Uh, this series is about the domesticated pigeon species Columba Livia, but much of the advice I give here is relevant to other small species of dove which are kept as pets. This is episode five, which is all about cleaning and hygiene. And I'll be talking about the cleaning and hygiene, not just of your bird cages or bird housing, uh, but also of the food, of the birds themselves, and also of your home. So first of all, let's talk about uh, keeping clean the cage housing for your birds. And why is this important? Well, quite apart from the aesthetic unpleasantness of having a dirty cage and also the potential for a bit of smell, uh, it's really important to make sure that you keep your bird cages clean for the bird's health as well as your own. Uh, pigeons poop a lot, uh, as I mentioned in one of my earlier videos, uh, and poop can attract bacteria, it can also attract fungus in the right kind of circumstances, which has the potential to make you or your bird sick. And also, if your bird is sick, uh, they will excrete potentially additional uh, parasites and other pathogens uh, in their poop, uh, which has the potential to reinfect them or other birds that you may have uh, if it's not kept clean regularly. Also, pigeons produce a lot of dust uh, when they preen, uh, and if this is not cleaned away regularly, uh, this has the potential uh, not only to make your home very dirty, uh, but also potentially to affect your breathing as well. Uh, when the pigeons flap their wings, this dust will be liberated into the air and will settle on lots of surfaces and will be breathed in by anyone living in the house. So it's really important to make sure that you have a good cleaning regime uh, to make sure that, that you're keeping on top of the dust uh, and that you're managing the droppings uh, to make sure that you and your bird's health is kept in tip-top condition. So how often should you clean your bird's cage? Well, I recommend uh, that all bird cages are cleaned at least once a week. If your bird is sick and perhaps has diarrhea or is particularly messy in how they eat their food uh, and they fling a lot of it about, then you may need uh, to clean the cage more often or at the very least change the cage lining uh, more often. But generally once a week is enough uh, in most circumstances. Before you prepare to clean your bird's cages, you should remove your birds from the cages and make sure that they are in a safe area. So you've not got any windows open too wide um, and that they're not anywhere where they're going to be in danger uh, or that they're going to be in risk of being stepped on uh, or anything whilst you're working on the cages. You don't need particularly specialist tools or equipment to clean bird cages if you're keeping pigeons at home. If you're keeping pigeons in aviaries or lofts outside, there are a few specialist kits, uh, pieces of kit that you would need uh, in order to keep these type of environments clean. But for most people who are keeping uh, a cage indoors, uh, most of the equipment that you'll need to keep things clean and tidy will just be standard stuff that most people will have in their homes. So here's the basic kit that I recommend that you have for cleaning your cages. First of all, a dry brush. Uh, and this is for uh, brushing down uh, things like the cage bars uh, to get rid of any dust or feathers that have got stuck on them. Uh, and for this, I just use the brush that comes with a, a standard uh, dust pan and brush. Uh, and this does a great job uh, of brushing all of the uh, dry dust off of the cage bars. The next thing you will need is a scrubbing brush, a wet brush uh, that you can use to wash and scrub down all of the plastic or other parts in your cage. And again, I just use a, a basic kitchen scrubbing brush here uh, that you can pick up and I use this to scrub down things like the plastic trays. Um, I use house bricks for perches, but you may have plastic perches uh, and these are really good uh, for scrubbing those down. You'll also need uh, cloths uh, so uh, to wash, wash and wipe down the cage surfaces. Uh, you can use things like uh, kitchen paper or, or other um, disposable materials. Uh, I prefer to use um, old flannels, dishcloths, anything like that uh, because I can put them in my washing machine and reuse them again and again and again. And they're really good for soaping up and just rubbing and wiping the cage down to get any dried poop 
uh, or any other dirt and dust uh, off of your uh, plastic cage surfaces. Uh, you also may want to consider investing in a scraper. Um, if you've got a particularly hard incrustation of poop, perhaps your bird likes to perch in one specific area and it tends to build up, uh, or you want to clean non-plastic surfaces, so if you've got wooden perches and things like that in your cage, I don't recommend you get them wet, uh, in which case it would be better to, to scrape them. Uh, this is just a standard paint scraper that you can pick up from any uh, DIY store. It's also good if you've got any dried poop on your hardwood floor um, or, or any other hard floor surface, um, uh, good for scraping uh, that up. Also, you will need uh, something to dry uh, all of the cage parts or to, to lay down to protect things from bird dust. Um, and I just use old towels. And the great thing about old towels is they're nice and thick and they're hard wearing and you can wash them in the machine at very high temperatures to make sure that they get clean and sanitary and you can use them again and again and again. So that's a basic kit for cleaning a cage. So. How do you go about cleaning a cage? Well, I have a very standard process that I use for cleaning my cages. I use large uh, indoor guinea pig and rabbit cages with deep plastic trays, um, uh, as you will have seen when you watched an earlier episode where I talked about cages and housing. Uh, there are other different sorts of cages, perhaps the dog crate or perhaps a proprietary bird cage specifically meant for hook bills uh, or other sorts of large birds. Um, and most caging will have similar sorts of cleaning requirements. They'll have some plastic elements, so maybe a plastic tray or a plastic base. They might even have some plastic perches um, and other fixtures and fittings too. Also, if you've done something like customising um, a dog crate or something like that, you might potentially have some wooden perches or metal fixings or things like that. I personally recommend that if you have any metal fixings that you try to keep those dry and brush those down um, rather than getting them wet. Also similarly for wooden perches to try and brush or scrape them rather than getting them wet unless you are able to put them in a very warm environment or it's a very hot sunny day that you can put them out there and make sure that they get thoroughly dry. Uh, certainly any wooden structures you wouldn't want to put inside the cage while they were still damp uh, because they could potentially attract mould um, unless they are thoroughly dry. So first of all, uh, I brush down all of the bar elements of my cages. So you'll be surprised, but although the bars don't get wet or dirty, uh, they do attract a lot of dust and dust will stick to them. Uh, and certainly uh, during the molting season, feathers will stick to them too. Uh, but this responds really well to a nice dry brushing uh, with the handled brush that I showed you earlier. So I brush down all of those parts uh, first. Usually the bar part will, will lift off of the cage or come away from the cage. So remove all of the other parts first. So the perches, the plastic trays, the shelves, the toys, uh, whatever else you've got, the bowls of dishes, whatever else you've got inside the cage. Remove all of these first and then give all of the bars uh, a good brush down with a dry brush uh, and any debris uh, may fall into the bottom of the cage. The next thing uh, would be to uh, empty the tray uh, at the bottom. Um, I use uh, my vacuum cleaner for this uh, and I thoroughly recommend it if you have a good vacuum cleaner to actually use your vacuum cleaner as much as you can uh, to clean um, your cages. You could potentially with a small brush attachment also use that instead of the hand brush. Uh, on the bars of the cages, uh, but you can certainly use it around the bottom of the tray and that will suck up any dried poop uh, that comes loose. Uh, you could use the scraper to loosen it uh, if need be. Uh, certainly any bird dust, feathers and also any spilled food as well. And I make sure I've hoovered out all of that uh, loose debris first uh, before I clean uh, the trays. Uh, the way I clean that the plastic parts of the cages, so this could potentially be perches or the, or the plastic tray at the bottom um, or, or perch shelves or whatever other plastic fixtures and fittings you've got, including potentially toys, uh, if you've got plastic toys for your birds, um, I just use soapy water. So depending on how dirty these parts are, you could soak them in soapy water, so perhaps put them in the bath. Or, or in the sink um, and I use normal normal dish soap uh, for this um, nice uh, nice hot soapy water um, and wash all the plastic cage parts 
if the cage parts aren't particularly dirty uh, you can instead use uh, a cloth and just soak it in some nice warm water put a bit of dish soap on there and wipe everything down by hand but every now and then uh, if the plants are particularly mucky uh, you actually want to give them a nice good soak um, in some hot soapy water and if it's summertime and you've got a nice hot day outside it's certainly well worth putting them outdoors to dry off uh, it saves you a little bit of work um, drying them off yourself and also the sunlight as well um, the UV light acts as an antibacterial agent and will actually kill any bacteria on surfaces for uh, non-plastic parts of the cage, uh, you'll want to use a dry brush to brush them down, perhaps with the use of the scraper if they're encrusted with poop. For the house bricks, uh, if you're using those for purchase, which, which I do, um, those can be washed in water. Ha house bricks um, actually uh, respond really well to being scrubbed down with, with the scrubbing brush um, under, water, under running water. And again, you put them in a warm place uh, and they'll dry off quite, uh, and they'll dry off quite quickly. So once all of the cage parts have been brushed down and cleaned, you should then, before reassembling everything, just give everything a little bit of a spritz with some antibacterial cage cleaner. And it's really important that you use a product which is safe for pets, ideally it's specifically safe for birds. Uh, there are lots of brands out there. Um, I'm, I'm currently using uh, this one. Um, I'm about to move over to this one when that runs out. There's loads out there. I, I don't have any strong views about any particular one. Just as long as you make sure that it's pet safe or specifically bird safe. And when you're spraying it, uh, that your birds are not in the immediate area, as I mentioned earlier. And once you've sprayed down all of the cage parts, follow uh, the product instructions as to how to use it. You may need to leave it on for a minute or two. You may need to wipe it off. You could just leave it on to air dry. And then once all the parts are clean and that they've been sprayed with antibacterial cage, cage cleaner, you can then reassemble everything and put all the cage linings back in, etc. ready to go. In terms of all of the dishes and bowls, these two can be hand washed in soapy water. If you have um, duplicate sets, for example, of ceramic ones, as I, as I mentioned in the housing and equipment section, I can put those in the dishwasher actually. Uh, if I don't need to clean them immediately. But otherwise, most dishes and bowls uh, will tolerate uh, a nice wash in hot soapy water and certainly empty out any uh, food or water that was in them before you do that and replenish it with clean food and, uh, and clean water afterwards. Um, every now and then you may actually want to disinfect them um, by putting them, uh, soaking them in a solution with disinfectant and making sure you give them a good rinse and a proper dry afterwards. After cleaning your cages, uh, make sure that you wash your hands, uh, certainly before you handle any food or anything like that. So that was about the cleaning of your bird cages. So let's move on uh, to about food hygiene. Food hygiene is uh, really important for your bird's health. If the food becomes contaminated in any way, it can make your bird sick. So you do not want your bird eating food um, that has been pooped on, for example, or has become uh, infested in any way. Um, also the water, uh, you want to make sure that this is changed regularly too, especially if you've put any supplements, especially if those supplements are powder based, they will make the water cloudy, they will collect on the bottom and create a bit of scum, um, and also the water will get contaminated with bird dust that settles on the surface uh, as well. So I recommend uh, that food um, in water is replaced daily uh, or certainly immediately if it became contaminated. Food storage, it's really important to store your food in, in an appropriate way. It should be stored in a clean, dry container with a lid, uh, something where you're not uh, gonna get dampness encroaching inside. Um, if you're this is especially important to make sure that you have a clean and tightly sealed container if you store your pigeon food out in an outdoor building. So for example, maybe a garage or a shed or something like that. Uh, but I do recommend you store it inside your house if you can somewhere. Um, if you store your food in an outdoor building, it's more vulnerable to damp and therefore mold. 
uh, and also potentially to invasion uh, by things like rats or, or mice uh, or other sorts of animals coming in from the outside. You want to make sure that the food is staying dry, as I mentioned earlier, to stop the formation of mould. You also want to check the food regularly, give it a stir for aeration, um, and also and check that it isn't contaminated with any insects, particularly something like the flower weevil, um, which is known to invade pigeon food. Flower weevils are not actually harmful to pigeons, they won't harm your pigeons in any way, but they do destroy the food, especially the grain, uh, and they will munch on it uh, and create a nasty dust at the bottom which will mulch and get damp and could potentially introduce mould. And also if you put contaminated food in dishes inside your pigeon's cages, the weevils will scuttle out and they will get everywhere in your house um, and are a bit of a pain in order to clear up. So you should check your food regularly to make sure that there isn't anything living in there. You should also check the container, especially if you're storing it outside, to make sure that there isn't any signs that it's getting attacked by mice or rats. Certainly look out for signs of any chewing, uh, any um, holes that have been uh, chewed into the bag or the box, um, or any droppings as well. Make sure you dispose of any food uh, that has been contaminated uh, in any way. Make sure that you're keeping uh, those containers in which you are storing food uh, cleaned periodically. So when you finish one uh, sack of bird food, take the opportunity to clean uh, the container first before you refill. Also with regards to the supplements and the minerals, perhaps that you mix with the food or the water, again, make sure you're storing them in accordance with the product instructions in clean, dry containers. Um, and do make sure that you're checking them regularly and don't use them past uh, their use by dates. Next, I'll talk about bird hygiene. So this is about the cleanliness of the birds themselves. So even though you're keeping your birds in an indoor environment where they're unlikely to get dirty in quite the same way as they would as if they were living outside, it's still very important uh, to maintain their hygiene. Uh, and if you check out uh, one of my Fun Fact Friday uh, videos, Are Pigeons Dirty? Uh, I'll talk about why it's really important. Uh, for birds uh, to keep clean and your pigeons will certainly want to do that. The number one way to help your pigeons do that is to make sure that they get a regular bath uh, and I recommend that you offer your pigeons a bath at least once a week um, or certainly offer them a bath or even a shower if your pigeon prefers that if they uh, express uh, a view that they would like to have that. And, and pigeons have their ways of, of, of letting you know, and I'm sure that there's lots of you out there with pigeons as pets uh, who are very well aware that when your pigeons are interested in having a bath, uh, maybe they'll jump into the sink when you're running the tap, or they'll jump into a, you know, a dirty pan that you've got on your uh, draining board in your kitchen, um, or they'll express interest uh, in you when you're, when you're running a shower or filling any other sort of bowl of water. So offer your birds a bath once a week uh, in an appropriate container. It's especially important to make sure that if you have any breeding birds, so, so any birds that are sitting on eggs with live chicks that you intend to allow them to raise, um, that they get a regular bath. If eggshells are slightly porous um, and they need the moisture to be transferred from the adult's bellies through the shell uh, to make sure that the chick doesn't become stuck to the inside of the shell, uh, which can cause them difficulty later when they try uh, to hatch. So therefore it's important that birds sitting on live eggs should be given the opportunity to bathe regularly. What sort of uh, container should you allow your birds to have a bath in? Well, it should be something large enough and deep enough to comfortably sit a pigeon and give them space to sort of um, dig their wings into it and, and, and flick the water uh, over their backs for them to sit in it comfortably. If you want uh, more than one pigeon to share a bath at the same time, then obviously you'll need a larger container. Uh, I use um, a large ceramic bowl I guess this is a fruit bowl or a salad bowl uh, this is quite comfortably sized for one bird really one one adult pigeon uh, even up to a fairly large size so I have Lahors which are, are above average size uh, bird 
um, although they do, my pair do actually like to climb in it together, although they can't get a terribly efficient uh, bath out of it. Um, you could use something like a cat litter tray or a really large a pan or bowl, anything that you've got that's suitably sized for the pigeon or pigeons that you want to be able to bathe and deep enough that you can put in a couple of inches of water. And a couple of inches of water is probably as deep as you would want. Uh, to make the water it doesn't really need to be deeper than that and certainly you wouldn't want to make it so deep that the, the pigeon was submerged uh, up to its chest or higher you don't need to put anything in the water necessarily just clean water will do it also doesn't necessarily need to be warm water uh, although my birds especially prefer the water to be a little warm it shouldn't be hot water it should just be nice and warm to the touch uh, it certainly shouldn't be something that you you couldn't comfortably put your hand in um birds which are molting which is a rather uncomfortable period uh, to go through might appreciate the water being warm um, that might be a little more pleasant uh, and a little more comfortable for them uh, it's also important to make sure uh, that your birds have a bath um, if they're feather footed so so i keep the horse they have feathers on their feet um no matter how clean you keep the cages they will walk through their own poop uh, from time to time it does happen uh, therefore it's important to make sure that they get in a bath regularly uh, so to keep their feet and their foot feathers nice and clean and what you can actually do is, is get someone to help you by by holding the bird and you can just gently with a little bit of gentle soap so something like baby bath um, baby bath or baby shampoo something really mild just put a little bit of that soap on the feathers and just ever so gently uh, rub the feathers and, and rub the undersides of their toes and feet and make sure you give them a good rinse uh, to make sure that you're keeping those feathers clean uh, and also underneath their toe pad and between their toes as well less of an issue if your pigeons do not have feathered feet also, as well as making sure that your birds get a regular bath, you should also check them regularly for ecto or external parasites as well. So things like mites and lice. Uh, and I'll talk uh, a little bit more about this um, when I talk about dealing with health issues in a later episode. Also, uh, you can consider after bath time, maybe checking their claws and their beak and giving them a little file or a claw clip. Uh, oh, and I'll also talk about that uh, in that later episode. Next, I'll talk about the hygiene of your home. So it's not just important to make sure that your bird's home is clean, but also that your own home is clean. And this is more about your health than it is necessarily about the health of your birds. As I mentioned in one of my Fun Fact Friday videos, are pigeons really diseased? It's possible to pick up illnesses from a pigeon if their droppings become dried and turn into dust that gets liberated into the air when you're cleaning and the bird dust from their preening, it's possible for you to breathe it in uh, and this can cause health problems. And therefore it's really important that you keep on top um, of hygiene in your home if you're keeping birds uh, and also to make sure that things like your water or your food or any air systems don't get contaminated either. This is, uh, really important uh, to make sure that um, you have a good cleaning regime, a regular regime that you can stick to and that is manageable. One of the things you can consider uh, that will alleviate the need for you to clean quite so much on the poop side of things uh, is potentially uh, getting your pigeons bird diapers, bird nappies. This is, uh, this is a little suit uh, that the pigeon can wear with a compartment or a pouch underneath their vent uh, which will catch their poop um, with, and they are available uh, for a number of different sellers online. Uh, I don't use them myself, I, I don't feel the need to, I largely keep my pigeons in an environment where there are hard floors and nice wipeable surfaces but you, if you live in a, a carpeted uh, property or you um, haven't got the time necessarily to engage in the level of cleaning required uh, to keep on top uh, of pigeon poop or you're especially house proud and um, are very worried about your surfaces getting pigeon poop on uh, then this may be a good uh, option for you. 
the diapers themselves are lined with little pieces of um, sanitary towels uh, cut up from a larger one and they will need changing on a regular basis. Uh, some of these diapers can also have um, leashes or fly leads uh, attached so you can take your birds outdoors and have them on a flight harness although it's really important to make sure um, that that harness and that lead is securely attached because if your bird escapes um, and is wearing a pigeon diaper um, that will keep filling up as long as they keep pooping uh, and unless someone can get hold of them um, that will cause uh, your bird uh, some significant problems uh, and potentially injury caused by that poop uh, building up inside their diaper. So really important to make sure that that is securely checked and that you're observing appropriate safety precautions if you take your bird out uh, for a bit of flight uh, on a leash. For those of you who don't want to put your pigeons in pigeon diapers, it is possible to manage the pigeon poop situation uh, inside your home if you're not super, super house proud uh, and can be a little bit tolerant uh, of a little bit of mess here and there. It will require you to make sure that you clean uh, regularly. Pigeons are creatures of habit, so they will have favourite perches and favourite places that they like to sit. Uh, and therefore it's possible for you to manage the poop by making sure that you are cover or protect uh, the floor or surfaces where they typically like to sit. I have lots and lots of old towels, both large and small, uh, and I use those around my home on the floor underneath my bird's uh, favoured perches uh, to catch any poop. Great thing about old towels is that you can scrunch them up um, over a bin and the poo crumbles off and then you can put them in the washing machine and you can wash them at very high temperatures uh, to make sure that you clean and sanitise those towels and then you can reuse them uh, again and again, which saves you using uh, a consumable resource like paper. One of the other things that uh, you can do is also put down potentially plastic sheeting, so something like a shower curtain uh, to protect surfaces as well. And, and the great thing about these is that you can soak them in water and they're wiped clean uh, and you can use them again and again. And I, I do use pieces of shower curtain here and there um, to protect my surfaces if need be. In addition to making sure that you protect surfaces from poop, uh, you will also need to vacuum regularly to manage the bird dust. So not only will dust collect in the cages where, where the birds stay, it will also collect wherever they perch and preen. Um, and that could be on you, uh, that could be on your furniture, uh, and therefore you will need to vacuum regularly to avoid this dust being spread um, over the whole of your house and certainly when the pigeons beat their wings they will they will blow this dust far and wide uh, so you will need to make sure that you vacuum um, probably at least twice a week if you have a couple of birds uh, to make sure that you keep on top of it. You may also want to consider investing perhaps in an air purifier or something like that or an air filter that may help you keep on top of the dust situation. Um, or allowing your birds only in certain areas of the house so that you can contain uh, the dust to certain areas, particularly if those areas um, are where you have lots of wipeable surfaces, hard floors, uh, things like that, as opposed to carpets uh, and soft furnishings, uh, which are more difficult to keep clean. If, uh, going back to poop for a moment, uh, if poop gets on your surfaces, it's important not to panic. Um, if poop gets onto a hard floor, it's easily wiped uh, with a damp cloth. Um, or if it dries, scraped off with a scraper, and again, sprayed with a little bit of antibacterial cleaner and wiped it off. And, and bird poop, once it's moistened with water uh, or some sort of cleaner, uh, will dissolve and soften and clean up quite easily. If bird poop gets on your carpet and you have healthy birds that produce nice little uh, dry round poops, I would recommend you try to avoid the temptation to, to wipe at it straight away because you'll more than likely smear it into your carpet. Um, if you can resist the temptation to wipe at it straight away, the best thing that you can actually do is leave it to dry completely. 
until it becomes hard and dry and then it's easily picked off and will barely leave a mark uh, on your carpet. If however your bird's poops are a little bit green for some reason um, it could potentially leave a small stain uh, which you might need to spot clean uh, with a little bit of carpet cleaner or upholstery spray uh, but healthy poops in most cases if allowed to completely dry uh, should be easily picked off of a carpet or another soft furnishing surface and you could potentially use the vacuum cleaner uh, to vacuum up uh, any remaining dust or, or small dry pieces that remain uh, but do invest um, in a little bit of upholstery or carpet cleaner spray uh, for the occasional spot cleaning uh, that you might need to do if there are any accidents. In terms of other hard surfaces, shelves, that sort of thing, um, generally um, a damp cloth uh, should suffice, perhaps a little bit of uh, general surface cleaning spray, which you could spray on and leave until it softens the poop. So it's generally quite manageable um, if you choose uh, not to put diapers on your bird uh, it's important not to panic uh, over poop <laughs> so in summary i've talked you through there all the aspects of cleaning and hygiene associated with keeping pigeons i've talked about uh, the bird cage hygiene uh, and a basic kit uh, for cleaning your bird's cages I've also talked about the hygiene of the food and the water, um, very important for your bird's health. I've also talked about the cleaning and hygiene of the actual birds themselves. And finally, I talked about cleaning and hygiene of your home. I hope that's been of use to you. I hope you'll continue watching my series. In episode six, I'll be talking about handling and behaviour. So please do join me for that. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe, click the notification bell so that you can hear about my future videos and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye bye.